Harry, what was your reaction when you got wind of Ronnie O'Sullivan's threat or desire to withdraw from this tournament? No, oh, I love Ronnie O'Sullivan. Do you know what? The first question that comes up is about Ronnie O'Sullivan. Doesn't that say it all? Doesn't that sum it all up? Ronnie O'Sullivan is news. He's tabloid news. He's news, news. And he's great for snooker. Gives us something to talk about. Now, I don't know what Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to do. And I'm not so sure that Ronnie O'Sullivan knows what Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to do. And I just think that adds to the whole mix of this exciting sport we're in. Ronnie, Ronnie's playing today. Did he think about pulling out? Yeah, I think so. He probably thought about a lot of things. But he's here and he's playing and I welcome him. I love the boy to death. He's a fabulous snooker player. And rather than people say to me, do you have a problem with Ronnie O'Sullivan? I wish I had 10 Ronnie O'Sullivans. Simple as that. And I'll put up with it because I watched that one-hour programme on Alex Higgins last night, as I'm sure you all did again. And you actually know we miss people like that. And I'd miss Ronnie. I want to see the real Ronnie, but he's, uh, he's special. He's a special person. Just remove the upper and lower age restrictions from the sport. Does this give an opportunity for more yeah, young trumps to be fast-tracked through into the sport? Let me say instantly, that's actually Jason Ferguson and WPBSA have removed that because they're in charge. And I welcome that move because we are seeing, we saw a very young Polish boy win, win the under-21 championships. And I don't want to stop people seeing the best. When, we, when you talk about sport, promoting sport, it's not rocket science. You have to promote a proper event. You have to, you have to use the best players. You have to have the best. And age restrictions, sex restrictions, colour restrictions, religious restrictions are out the window as far as I'm concerned. It's about ability. So I welcome that move greatly. Just going back to Ryan, Craig, he's obviously not hugely happy. Would you consider letting him have a year off and giving a protected lantern? Or no, of course not. No, no, we don't. Listen, there's a good phrase that the sport is bigger than any one player. The rules are the rules for everybody. That's not changing. That's not changing. We can't make exceptions for anybody. What we do is we try and help, put an arm around their shoulder. How can we be of assistance? You know, we try to help and we try to help throughout this year as much as we can with Ronnie's personal problems. You know, he's had a lot of those issues and we've tried to help him. But at the end of the day, we're running the sport for the benefit of the 96 professional snooker players in the world, the sponsors and the television broadcasters. So that's why we have rules. We hope, we hope the young man's happy. I'd love to see Ronnie O'Sullivan win the World Championships. It'd be great. But, you know, I can't affect that. And I, I just want to see the very best playing the very best. And I'd like to see everyone happy, but if they're not happy, well, then I can't help about that. If they're not happy with what's happening with this sport, if they're not happy with the progress this sport's making, I can't do anything else for them. They either pick up the flag or they walk home. Nothing in the middle. What if it was um, medical reasons that decided to take a year off? Well, again, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not a medical expert. So, you know, if someone makes an application for that, it'd be considered, you know, obviously, because we're not trying to be difficult with anyone. We just, we do like to know where we're going. We're running events. We're running events for television and for people that buy tickets and sponsors. And we're running events for the benefit of the sport. But at the same time, we are not a heartless organisation. If someone has a problem and we hear about it, we'll do everything in our power to help. What made you want to come back into snooker? I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. But our secret's safe. Um, I don't know. You know so I'm, I'm coming up, I know, it's difficult to believe. I'm coming up to 63. I, I like challenges. I like fights. I watched this game slowly slip away over the years with a certain amount of regret that I didn't stay and or didn't stay involved in the, the mainstream of the game. And uh, I think it was really talking to a couple of people that, whose opinions, and one of them was Ronnie O'Sullivan, and one of them was Steve Davis. People was the people's opinions that I would respect. And uh, listening to some of the people in power, you know, and it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know, and I, I like. I have a very soft spot for this game. I have to say, you know, I've been reasonably successful in my life, but my first sporting event I ever promoted was September 1974, that wonderful English southern area amateur snooker final between Terry Griffiths and Sid Hood. You know, and uh, from that moment on, you know, I love the game. I, I'm not a player, but I love the fact that it's the, the way it's played, 
I love the class of the game. I love the fact that it's a mental game as well as a timing game. I love the fact that I'm useless at it, same as most of the others. And, and I admire people with God-given talents. And, you know, my friendship with Steve Davis has gone on for 36 years. You know, he's my best friend. Um, and I don't think I'd be where I was, I am today without snooker. So in a way, it's a little bit of payback time, but also I like a little challenge. You know, and I've got an ego the size of a house, you know, and I knew I could be great with this, given the opportunity. So, you know, I didn't see any reason why you don't give it a good crack. And, you know, it's... My wife said to me, what are you doing? I thought you're supposed to be cutting back, you know. I don't cut back. I live life 101% in everything I do, and I have passion for it, and I have a lot of passion for snooker. You've listed a number of successes there. Have you made mistakes in the last 12 months as well, then? Yeah, yeah, I think there's always a couple of mistakes. No, nothing serious. Uh, yeah, I think we could have done a little bit better with some of the pro tour venues, I think, the, things like that, you know. Um, the players... I've got to understand nothing's going to be entirely perfect. I mean, it's no secret to say we're talking to Paul Mount at the Academy about staging some more events uh, with Paul this year. He's got excellent facilities down there and that would be marvellous. Um, I always say I make those. So it's when you actually get down to it, I make very few. I'm awfully good. <laughs> you know. If there's a sign, well, if there's a sign, we are smashing, we are smashing our, well, Germany was a fantastic sign for Europe, but we are smashing our box office records here at the Crucible. We have never, ever taken money like we're taking this week. It's always been a successful show, as you know. You've been here a few times yourself. This is well past what we've ever done before and going one way. So in my, in my black and white world, the fans are voting with their feet, and their checkbook and their cash. They're in a difficult market. They're coming out to watch our game. The, the, to me, the biggest things are the amount of people coming to the Crucible, the crowds in Germany, and the shootout on Sky, which I think showed three different aspects of snooker, which all look very, very productive and, and give, ruse, give a reason for optimism going forward. This is a very tough world we're in now. You know, to get people to buy a ticket for anything is, you know, it's a tough, it's, it, you know, it's a tough climate for everybody. Our, our glorious leaders tell us we've got four or five years of, you know, of cutting back while we spend money on everything else.